Hey guys, who have we got here? Isn't it? We've got go backwards this time, serious. We've got Andy, Amok, Steps, Colt, Dodge Attack, uh, Richmond Mike, Dom. Hi guys. So we're going to do Cauldron 2 tonight. Um, promised I'd play a little bit of this first, so it <laughs> should be interesting because. I'm only going to play it on the emulator, so it's probably going to be... <coughs> i just like to say hi to everybody. I should take a register though, shouldn't I? should all say present. <laughs> um, Alright, let's load up Vice. I'm absolutely terrible at this game. I still can't figure out much more. I think Richmond Mike was saying he'd not got very far, so I'm kind of in the same boat. Let's turn the music down a little bit. Tell me if the music is too loud, guys. Turn the stream music off. So I am playing on keyboard, so this is going to be tricky to say the least. Uh, key set A, okay, so I need to switch joysticks. Oops. I did want to do a certain position, okay. I did want to do some um, some experiments with the Kickass Crunch plugin, um, but I, I tried to do it before the stream and couldn't get it working. So we're still going to use crunching to do this, and I'll explain why when we start. Um, but we'll do it in a different way. So I'll, I'll show you how to do a make file. Um, all right, let's give this a try. So. Oh, I got my joysticks the wrong way around. Oh, there we go. <sighs> See, I can never work out how you jump higher. Seems to be to do with timing, doesn't it? So, there we go. Oh no. Hi Master Blaster. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> it's evil. Oh yeah, let's go this way. Oh no, you can't go this way. Oh god damn it. I'll be away getting through. Oh, oh man, this game is hard. I mean, oh god, I'm actually doing all right. I don't think I've ever got this far before, so <laughs> I have no idea where I'm going to end up now. Okay. Oh, I'm not sure how I got there. Yeah. 
Yeah, this... I remember number one being a lot easier than this one. Apart from the shooting up. Uh, the, the kind of... the bit at the beginning. I seem to have collected something. Oh, thank you for the raid, uh, Jerry, and welcome to the stream, everyone that's come along. Hey there, Jerry, what have you guys been playing tonight? Halloween games? Oops. So now I can shoot. It doesn't really help, because I can just kill things anyway, so... So difficult. Yeah, it doesn't feel like they did really, does it? It's... Oh man. I don't understand why it had to bounce as well. I mean, this game would have been equally as good if you just walked around, I think. Scary Halloween games on the Amiga, such as Horror Zombies from the Crypt, Ghostbusters 2, Pinball Fantasies, Stones of Man's Table, and Nuclear War. <coughs> well, we could try turning the bounce off. That might be something to, to give a try. Okay, so hitting things depletes my magic, so I don't really want to do that. This doesn't seem good. <laughs> uh, okay, let's give it another try. So that's the minimum I can bounce, and then if I press fire when I hit the ground. Okay. But also if you drop from a height you bounce higher as well. I mean, it's a nice mechanic, but it's in terms of how it looks, but it's just impossible to play. going up when I want to be going down. So originally I did want to do uh, Maniac Mansion tonight, um, but I had a look at it at lunchtime and the, uh, the multi-loader would have been a bit of a pain uh, to deal with. I need to find a better way of dealing with multi-load games, but um, it would have been nice to put mouse control in Maniac Man Mansion, which is what my original aim for tonight was. Which is why I didn't announce this game until a bit later. Okay, that's... I'd die if I hit that, oh, no, it's a spiky thing. Notice how the multicolors for the screens change as well. So it's like grey and red on this screen, or grey and white. I'm not sure which one's the multicolors. 
and on some other screens it's like a red colour. There seems to be a bug there, because I always end up at the top of the castle. Oh, is it a teleport? Yeah, maybe that's what it is. It's super confusing. I also have had no idea where I'm going as well, so I'm basically just wandering around until I die. Okay, well, I got a lot further on one life then. Okay, I'm not sure what... Okay. It's cruel, this game. Oh, I've not seen this screen before. Has anyone actually completed this? I mean, obviously somebody's completed it, but I mean, anybody on the stream ever completed it? Oh. Okay, I need to get that somehow. I bet I can't get up there. No. Nope. Oh, this doesn't feel good. I need to flip that switch up there to drop that into it, I guess. But how to do that, I don't know. Oh no. Hi, Dr. Miz. Welcome to the stream. How am I supposed to get over that? I guess I need to go up. This game is stupid. It's too hard. There we go, right. Oh, you. <sighs> I mean, that's that must just be through insane amounts of playtime on it. 
I imagine this is all about just learning every single jump. hit the yellow lever can I hit that with can I shoot I, I need to shoot it don't I so I need to jump up there and shoot it somehow oh Just knock that. Yeah, there we go. But okay, that helps me get over there. <coughs> As soon as I die, we're gonna we're gonna dissect. This is a dissect stream after all. But I did promise I'd play this. <sighs> Definitely doing a lot better than I did when I tried it earlier. Still don't really have an idea what I'm doing. See, I want to get that magic, but I have a funny feeling it's just going to kill me. Stupid candle. And how can a candle kill a pumpkin when every Halloween we stuff pumpkins full of candles? Start by stopping that witch laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah insta-death spiders. Ah, uh, right, okay. So what I've done is I've loaded this game up using one of the many kind of um, CSDB downloads, cracked versions online. Loaded up with no cheats. Um, just to get it to this point. And then I've taken a snapshot, which I don't think you can see. Yeah, you can just about. So I've taken this snapshot here. So what I did was then load it into, well, I'll show you what I've created and I'll show you why it's wrong. Make file not found. I do have a make file. Oh, there we go. So normally we press F7. Uh, I'm going to turn the, the sound off in it as well. I don't want to hear the music for now. Not working anyway. Um, oh, it's because of that. I don't need that now. Okay. Normally we use F7 or, or Shift F7 to um to load the uh to build and to load into vice um but the problem with that is if you've got a program if you've got a program like this which covers more than um the 0800 to fff range um then what you end up with is a, a file which loads directly into into screen ram so if i if i load this the normal way uh, oh, I've not saved it out. Okay, let me go and save it out. So the way I save it out is I open up Infiltrator. You can do this through Vice as well, but I, I like to do it in Infiltrator because I can see a bit easier what's going on. Um, and so what I did was I saved out the range from 0400 to FFF, export it as a bin, um, call C2. I should have had a dot bin on the end. 
which gives me a binary file of those bytes and then I can import it in here. And you can see if I just try and run that through the emulator, what I get is this. And this is because there's there's stuff in screen RAM in the screen RAM area um, that's important. So obviously I can't do anything here. If I type SYS, I'm, I'm wipe, wiping what's in screen RAM. So what you can do is you can make a, a batch file. If you make a batch file and call it make.bat, and then just use the uh, command line for, for compiling. Um, so this is a command line for compiling with, with kick-ass. Um, your path is probably going to be this um, because the sublime text plugin kind of forces you to put it there. If it's not, you can change it to whatever your path is to the kick-ass um, kick jar file. Uh, and then the name of your entry file. So in my case, it's main.asm here. Um, and then I use Xmizer, which I have I could put in this file here, but I've got a folder on my desktop called Cracker, which I put all my things in. Um, and then I use Xmizer to create a self-extracting um, PRG file. This is the entry point. I'll show you how I found this in a minute. Um, this means no effect. If I, if I turn this off, I'll show you what happens and why, why that's wrong. Um, then your input file and your output file. I just use the same output file as the input file, so it just overrides it. And then I call um, vice using a command line as well. So with that file made, what you can then do is just press F8 and it will do the crack is. <laughs> I am laxity, yeah. I just keep releasing my own, my own uh, previews. I read a little bit about the, the way that the um, scoring works for those. You see this flashing byte down here. So that's because Xmizer is, is placing that byte in the corner. Um, so that's wrong anyway, because we shouldn't be overwriting anything on that, that screen. That's what we're trying to avoid. And the second thing is, is the, the fonts are all wrong in here. So we're going to work out why uh, in a minute. Um, you see all the, all the fonts are completely screwed up. Actually, it seems all right in game, but um, yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, I was reading about the, the, the rules for previews. So previews actually don't score very much at all. Um, but what they are allowed to do, and this is it's silly that this, they've even got a set of rules that they all play by. So it's such a it's such a kind of weird little club thing that they've got going on. Um, it's, it's just bizarre. I don't get it. Um, but they're only allowed to do three preview releases and of, of any particular game. So if we carried on making that game for 10 years, they'd only, they'd only get points for three versions of it that they release. Um, what do they get for their points? They go to the top of some table and that's it really. Um, thank you for the follow Neo X quick. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, they have like a group kind of table where they, they monitor who, who does the best every year on, on these releases and on the various types of releases as well. Um, but yeah, they, the, they can only do three preview releases and they've done two already. So, um, we should wait until they do a third and then completely change everything in the game so that the preview is nothing like what the actual game is like. Because the other rule as well that they've got is, um, the other rule that they've got is that they can't, they can't do a second preview release until the second one is significantly different to the first one, which is why they've not been releasing our stuff every week. So. Can you tell me what the D030 bit does? Um, if I remember rightly, D030 is the speed, the processor speed uh, bit. So if, you, if you're if you using a Turbo Chameleon, for instance, you can use that to work out, um, well, to do either, either work out what speed um, it's running at or to work out uh, or to set the speed for the Turbo Chameleon. So for instance, on a Commodore 128, that will be a different value to what it is on the Commodore 64. Because Commodore 128 is 2 megahertz, I think, um, when it's not doing any VIC register stuff, um, and 1 megahertz when it is, and the C64 is 1 megahertz. Um, yeah. Why'd you ask, Gunstar? It's kind of quite a random question. 
anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain. Um, well, let's let's go and turn this off. So this uh, that little flashing color in the corner. If we do dash n, it will get rid of that and then no longer show it. Have I done any Amiga related stuff yet? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Um, it's uh, it's something I do want to do one day, um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of enjoying the simplicity of 6502, so. Um, we do all 64k <laughs> to see which ones I know out of them all. I get stuck on a lot of them. D030 is an odd one as well because it kind of stands out that it's not in the normal Vic area. So it's it's kind of obvious that it does something a little bit different. Um, but yeah, my knowledge of them isn't isn't that great to be honest. I still have to look them up constantly. That's why I, that's why I have my little printouts of all the registers. Um, okay. So yeah, so adding this hyphen n into Xmiser just stops it from doing any effect which would which would destroy the kind of contents on the screen. There are some other effects that you can do instead as well. So you could do um, X1 for instance. Um, so if you put if you don't put anything, you'll get the little flashing thing in the corner. If you put hyphen n, it will turn off uh, any effects, or you can use X. Uh, and numbers to, to set some effects. You can also create custom ones as well. If I do this one. You read that Test Drive 2 supports D030, but I think I have tried Test Drive on my Turbo Chameleon, actually. Um, I can't remember what settings I used, though. You see, the, the, that bit just sets the border color, and that's that's a safer thing to change, because if we change the border color, it's unlikely that that location is going to have effect on anything else. Um, yeah, you add. Yeah, well, doing the X one is the same as doing Ink uh, D zero twenty as well. You can also tell it to run code before and after as well. Um, but I I rather do that by setting this value. So normally, if you're doing a big program, you can just do that and use your basic upstart, and it will it will jump to that. But because we're deliberately trying to launch this without messing around with basic. I put this address in. So I'll show you how I found that address. Um, so this is Infiltrator, debugger. It's kind of hard to see in here exactly what's going on. Um, first thing I like to do is uh, I create an exclude file. So if you, if you go in here and you delete all these, this is basically the things that it will ignore. Um, when it does the disassembly, but sometimes there's code in these areas, so it's it's worth turning them all off. Once you've turned them all off, you can then save that exclude list. Um, so what I've done is I've saved an exclude list there, which turns them all off. It's just quicker than individually clicking them one at a time and right clicking and, and stuff. So let's do a disassembly. Let me turn the font size right up. So I'm I'm getting getting used to this program more and more, and I, I really like the the stuff that it can do. So once the progress is done, you go to disassembler and you get the disassembly for the entire memory, which looks like this. And what it does is it tells you pretty much everything. So if there if there's an address that's been jumped to at any point, uh, let's just find somewhere random with with one. So like this address here you can see the arrows that, that point to it from various places. These bits here tell you which addresses have jumped to it. So the first address in brackets is the address that we're at. And these addresses here are where it's being jumped to from. And you can follow those arrows back to those locations as well. So it's really good for seeing kind of the flow of the code. So I can see that this location here is jumped to from this line here, this line, uh, sorry, this line here as well. Yeah, it is like C64 IDA Pro. So I actually I've been doing um, uh, a lot of reverse engineering this week um, at work. I've been learning a tool called Gidra. I don't know if you know it, Colt, um, which is uh, it's like a free version of IDA Pro, and it's it's really powerful. Um, it's by the NSA as well, which is is kind of interesting. Um, so I've been using that and a, a tool called Hopper as well for doing Objective C decompiling. 
um but it's been really good i've been doing kind of um uh pass uh not password kind of activation key reverse engineering work out what the kind of patterns are in the in the activation keys which isn't really kind of part of my job it was just uh, a good way to practice uh, reverse engineering and reading x86 again and c it's been a little while since i did x86 and c so um but yeah this is this is essentially the the same sort of thing but for but for c64 and this is better than you will get from id or um this is better than you'll get from IDA or, or Gidra with, with C C C sixty four code because it's it's meant for the Commodore, so you can see things like sprites and, and stuff quite easily. Um and it knows about certain sequences as well. So anyway, with, with the code loaded up in here, um this this kind of bar at the top shows you where it's found it's analyzed the code and it's found runnable code. Or just data so the dark green is just data and the light green is runnable code so there's a couple of areas here so the first one is is in this location here 0 100 now one thing to know about this location is it's very often used by decompilers this is the stack space um, so when you push things onto the stack they get pushed onto this location here at 0 1 ff stacks although i've said before you should think of a stack like a stack of plates whatever you put in on the top is the only thing you can take off and that's how they work that, that is what a stack is that's why it's kind of thought of as a stack and a stack of plates is a really good um actually i do i think i did make a tools command yeah i need to add some more stuff in that but um i did add a tools command um but stacks work top down so even though you're stacking plates up just imagine the stack is upside down so actually the gravity is the wrong way and when i put a plate on i'm actually putting it on the bottom and it's falling up to up that way so the top of the stack is here and it works its way down so what they tend to do is they tend to write these decompression routines that, that fit into this space because it's not used by anything or very rarely it's used by anything so if you see code here you can probably ignore it unless you absolutely can't find any other entry point so there was another location here um you already dissect international karate no i haven't actually um we did do barbarian which has a similar kind of uh technique for for doing stuff but we've not done um international karate yet it might be a good one to do at some point um do i have it yet yeah, i did i added the tools in i might add the i need to add this disassembler in as well because uh, i'm using this more and more so this is saying it's found another area of disassemblable code. Um, although to be fair, it just looks like it just happens to be easy to disassemble. It's it's it still looks like data to me though. Let's have a look. Try to figure out where it is. Yeah, it's just data, I think. So then that leads me to this block here. Uh, if you go to the beginning of this block, um, I'm sure there's a better way of jumping around, but I found this chunk of code here. Now, anytime you see a set interrupt, you know that there's a piece of setup going on that can't have interrupts um, enabled at that point. Um, you can also see it sets the border color to black and the background to black. So this is a really good candidate for an entry point to the program. And so that's what I put into, into my, um, uh, into my program in here. No, sorry. In my batch file 8009 and sure enough, it loads, but I'm getting the wrong character set. So I'm going to try, we're going to try a few things, um, to see if we can get a better version of the game. So first of all, I'm going to just try getting the whole of the memory so from zero to to fff i'm going to replace that um, and i'm going to put zero in there and then i'm going to do a make again and just see if that makes a difference how can i write in asm not plug in for c plus plus 
because that's for me this is the joy of doing Commodore 64 I, I deal with high level language all, all day in my job and I don't want to I don't want to write something even for the Commodore a machine that I love um, in a high level language I'd rather use a low level language okay so that's not worked that's that's kind of created some kind of weird weird mess on the screen plus no matter how, no matter how good your compiler is um, you will always be able to do something a little bit quicker without it um, certain certain effects and demo effects um, the, the, the kind of nitty gritty parts the, the 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 kind of strict timings and the and the very kind of optimized code has to be done by hand i mean yeah you can do huge chunks of stuff in c or or in other languages but i just prefer i just prefer to do it in in assembly and i actually think if you if you learn assembly even if you learn 6502 you will learn much more about your high level languages from learning how to optimize assembly than you would from just using assembly or uh, using the high level languages all day C64 basic language is basic. C64 basic language is terrible. C64 basic may as well not exist. And in fact, it's the only thing I can be thankful for with C64 basic is that it was so bad that it forced me to learn machine code, forced me to learn assembly, because it couldn't do anything really. And anytime you wanted to do anything interesting, you still had to poke values into memory anyway. So you were essentially you were essentially doing some kind of um, memory manipulation okay so that doesn't work either so i'm just going to keep moving this this register up um until i get it to run 100 at a time Yeah, I d I'm not a massive fan of Python. I, I like my kind of C style languages, so um, JavaScript, Java, C sharp, uh, C, things like that. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the kind of Python, Ruby style kind of languages. But that's just my, that's my personal preference. It's you know, each to their own. I understand the, the, the benefits of them. And I will use them if I have to. Um, Python has some um, some really useful stuff, especially for um, security stuff, because uh, it's got really good access to um, system functions as well, which you do have in Node, but it's just a bit easier with Python. So, but anyway, this isn't a Python stream. This is an assembly stream. Oh, wrong button. So actually, I think, I think this is right. I think we were, I was right in the first place. It's, I just think my entry point isn't correct. Let's see what happens when I do this one. No, see so that's crashed as well. Okay. So I'm going to take it from, from this location. I do think this location is correct. Um, I, I'm actually going to reduce that to FF f8 or no fff9 um, because there are some registers ffa b c d e and f are, are used for uh, interrupts so i probably shouldn't be using those let's save that and build that I really wasn't sure if I was going to manage to stream tonight. I've not been feeling too great today, but um, I couldn't miss the chance to, to do a Halloween stream, so here I am. Okay, so we've got the, the same issue here with the font. It's just not set in the right font, so at some point there'll be a routine which sets the value in D018 and probably DD00. Um, that sets these correctly although i noticed that half the font is correct so i just want to see if something has corrupted the font uh somewhere along the way uh, so i'm going to open it in the debugger if the debugger will load and i'm on 
want that one. Okay, so let's have a look at the font now. Oops, wrong one. Oh, every time. Right, there we go. So actually, yeah, it does look like the font is kind of corrupted. Um, this is at... I'll say it's at 7,000, so I, I'm not sure why it would be corrupted at that point. Unless it's not saving out correctly for some reason. Um, but this is kind of odd. Ah, this is fonts. Sorry, this is font and part of it is characters as well. Uh, part of it is sprite, sorry. So maybe the font is is incorrect. Let's, um, let's... It says it's a... Okay, so let's try changing these. Okay, that's kind of partially right. Hmm. Thank you for the follow, God or God or TV. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so I'm not sure why this font is is incorrect. So. What I'm going to do is, I wonder if we can load the Vice Snapshot into the debugger. I don't think we can actually. Um, I'll tell you what we can do though, we can have a look in Infiltrator. So, as I said, with the great thing with Infiltrator, you can take a look at um, sprites, you can take a look at fonts as well. Um, so if we take a look at the screen, um, which was, was in this RAM bank and the char set was around about here. Um, and we set, let's see, it's not showing any screen. Oh, screen, there we go. Uh, this all looks like jumbled data. It doesn't seem to be anything resembling an actual Ah, oh, there we go. So, yeah, it's like the data is, is saved incorrectly. Okay, so what I'm going to do, now I know the bytes that I need, I'm going to load it up into the snapshot into Vice, and I'm going to save it from Vice instead, if we get any a better result from that. That could be all it is. Because this is what it should look like. So if I go in here, um, it's a good idea to set um, the value in, in memory location one to one zero, which will means that if you go and have a look at D zero zero, if there's anything underneath IO RAM, um, then you'll save that as well when you do the save. Uh, expect to know a file name okay so I need a file name first this will be a PRG now you have to pass in device number zero for it to save cool now I've got to go and find that now um, which I think is probably in my vice folder so let's go and have a look there tools no Uh, test PRG, yep, there we go. I'll put, paste that into here. I'm going to rename it C2bin, and I'll show you how we turn a PRG into a bin file. So PRG is literally just a binary file with two extra bytes at the beginning. Um, as you'll see when I open this up. So you see these two bytes, oh, actually, you're not going to see them because that's really tiny. Basically, the first two bytes is the address that it should load into. So it's the start address of the of the PRG. 
Um, so you can usually just open up a hex editor and delete those two bytes. Um, so let's give that a try now. Hopefully we get the right font. If we get the right font in there, then we can move on to the, the next stage, which is open it up in the debugger and having a play around with it. It could also be an artifact of this compression as well. There could be other things going on. Yeah, see, there's something odd going on here. So if I was to just load, if I was just to compile this into a PRG, she's going to put me in this, this place like this where I can't do anything. But if I jump into memory at that location, by using hyphen n, hyphen n for what? For the, for the make. Yeah, let's try that. That's what I thought at first, Andy, but if you if I'll show you again in a second in um Infiltrator. It it seems to be it seems to be breaking at a different location. I think it's something to do with this this area in, in screen RAM here. It might need to be a bit lower. So this is what we're seeing. Um, actually, we're not even seeing that. We're seeing the... Something like... Oh! What? So what are we seeing? We're seeing... that's correct now so we're going to have a look at the values that are in, in memory so we're going to have a look at d018 and that's currently set at uh, 0d so let me bring up the memory map d018 okay so Pointed to character memory is the bits 1 to 3. So 0D would be uh, 8, 4, 2, 1. So 8, 4, 1. So it would be, uh, it would be this one here, 7,000 to 7 FFF. And that's what we're actually seeing in here. For some reason, it's not saving. It's not displaying correctly. Could it be a Vic bank that's wrong, maybe? So let's go and have a look at the Vic Bank, which is at uh, DD00. So we want this Vic Bank here, uh, which means the first two bits, so the lower two bits should be 10. Um, which it is, so okay. So it's not that. And I don't understand why this would not be showing. Hmm. Let me bring up, it's hard to read the chat on the stream. Yeah, let's, let's do that. So, um, Actually, we can see in here um, another good reason for, for using this uh, this assembly. Let me just turn this sound off. I can't listen to that. Um, another good reason for using this disassembly is it has these routines here. So this is the entry point that I found. You can see there's three places that jump to this location. And the first one is down in that um, in that compression area, so let me go to that location. So there is 
a routine here which jumps to somewhere down here wherever it is okay I'm not sure what that's doing I think that's probably being skipped then um, but we do have oh no O one hang on jump server in O one DA is is here I'm not sure what that is but interestingly we do have um, we do have a little bit of code before it starts so I'm going to try putting that code somewhere um, and seeing if I can get it to, to run so I, I noticed there was an area around here before so I'm going to put it at uh, 7d100 so um so this is i'm going to leave it there i'm just going to write the new code so this is actually setting up the, the banking um and then for some reason it jumps to this as a subroutine and then it does this jump to 1a1 um, however see maybe it needs this could maybe it needs the decompressed code as well maybe that's the problem here um, the decompression routine for some reason which is fine I can save it as a separate thing and, and compile them together so um, what was that address again? One. Oh no, sorry. Jump A seven A E. Okay. A E. Right, so. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that in there, and instead of the original address in our make file, I'm gonna use this address. Uh, oh, and I pressed F7. I should have pressed F8. It loads up. Okay, we turned off the border flashing, so. And we're still getting an issue here. Okay, I, I'm going to put it back into the debugger because I want to have a look at what font is actually in that location because it seems like it should be working but it's not. Okay, so here we go. We've got a weird font. For some reason they've used sprites for this bit and then characters for there I guess to save on character ROM space but here is our char set and it says it's at 7000 which is where the font should be and yet we're not seeing it correctly something is destroying that font everything is set exactly as it should be Oh, that font is wrong okay what I'm gonna try to do um, is actually save the font out and, and examine it so if we do the same again we'll load the, the snapshot up And then I'm going to save, I'll call it font.bin um, from there to 7ff, that's the one. Thank you for the follow, Cook Uni. Welcome to the stream. Interesting name. 
don't know why my sound keeps appearing again. A bit annoying. Uh, okay, font dot bin. There we go. Um, again, just going to remove those two bytes off the front here. I just want to see if this is actually um, the correct font at all. It feels like it's not. See, that looks fine here. But for some reason, the decompression is destroying it. Or the compression is destroying it, shall I say. That looks absolutely fine. So you guys can probably see. Make it a bit bigger. Now, that's exactly what you'd expect from, from that font. Everything, you know, there's no jumbled mess in there. Everything looks correct. So the other thing I want to try quickly is um, actually no, because it is reading the data from somewhere. Because there are the correct things in the right places, but just the wrong font. So I'm going to try one more thing and then we'll try um, we'll try uh, looking around to see if the things have actually been set properly. Um, so what I want to try is actually loading that font in. Um, it, it worries me though if this is what's happening to the font, what is happening to the rest of the game as well. As the multicolor bit been, been set cleared, I'll, I'll take a look in a minute. Just the sound would stop turning itself back on. Save settings on exit. There we go. File, exit. Uh, over, uh, to be honest, Gunstar, I've not thought much about Overlord. Um, I do want to go back to it at some point, but um, I've been so busy with many, many other things, I've just not had a chance to look at it. I do need to work a better way out of doing multi-load games though, as well. Um, I mean, for me, the cracking of games, the kind of dissecting them like this is, is a new thing for me. I've only really started doing it to this extent um, on stream so before then I would um, I would look at games but I wouldn't really change uh, change things and I would just try and investigate how they worked um, but with this kind of changing things we're having to learn how to how to patch things um, and I'm not I'm not a scene cracker or anything so this is kind of unusual territory for me um, but it's good it's all it's all good learning um break time yeah give me give me a minute or two i just wanna i wanna have a look uh in the debugger again at what's going on here because it looks like this font is almost correct but you know the characters are in the right place but they're not the right shapes and it doesn't seem to matter where I go up and down the screen I think this is as close as we get but this is the completely wrong character set this is the character set we should be using so what I want to do is I want to take a look Okay, so this is what the character set looks like at this point. I wonder if it's something to do with where I am in the game. Maybe I need to, maybe I actually need to die first and then come back. 
Um, at the moment, nothing, Zephyr. Um, <laughs> trying to just get the game to load without bugging out on us. Um, but at the moment, it's I'm not having much success with it. Uh, for some reason, when we save the data out, it's it's missing some stuff. And I'm not entirely sure why. Something seems to get copied into this area incorrectly. Am I actually playing now? No. Okay, now I'm playing. Yeah, this looks this looks fine. Um oh no it doesn't look. The backgrounds are all wrong. It's broken. Something has really broken it. No, there's there's definitely some some kind of some stuff missing. Um, oh, I've never been here before. Uh, Insta death spiders. Um, so we look at this this version, which is the the snapshot that does work. And have a comparison between two. I mean, this is hard to compare manually eyeballing. Oh, actually, yeah, I can see that it's wrong. I can see that it's wrong. This this data here is incorrect. Interesting. Which makes me wonder how how much other data is incorrect as well. Um, is this being copied to from some other locate? Oh, did you see that? I don't know if you caught that, but this is actually being written to. Okay, I'm I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, when I come back, we're going to investigate that. So, this is being written to so this the the thing is being um the font is being written to from somewhere else in memory and we may not be copying that that um font properly so we'll find out where it's coming from um and we'll do a comparison there and hopefully we can figure out what's going on um but there's definitely a mismatch between what i'm seeing on the main screen and what i'm seeing um in here so we'll figure that out in a minute all right um yeah, I'll take five guys. I'll be, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I should probably put some music on that be right back screen at some point. All right, let's have a look. So I saw this area getting written to, so I'm going to... Um, I need to load the original in to see where it's actually getting it from. Well, let's let's see where it's trying to load it from, and then see if the the data is kind of being grabbed at the wrong place. So I'm going to stick a breakpoint on this location here. Um, oops, didn't want to do that. So we're going to check if any value gets written to that memory location, and then we're just going to play a little bit of the game. Okay, straight away it's. So it's loading from OD100 for the game. Okay, so um, I'm just going to turn the breakpoints off a sec while it loads the game up. Oh no, that was... Okay, OD100. So we should see if we go in Infiltrator and have a look at the screens. If I set the uh, char set to actually we're going to get jumbled mess here because it's in the middle so this is the font we need and it looks incorrect at this point hmm so the question is where is it getting Unfortunately, I don't have a screen that will give me give me data that actually looks reasonable. I mean, 
can see there there are some characters in this location so the question is why is it not picking those up let me find the original version of the game uh, which I think is in my Hacker file probably this one maybe let's have a look so this was the demo the intro even turn the cheats off Okay, I'm going to first of all, I'm just going to try saving out that block of memory again. Um, see if we have any success with it. Ten eighty p. Yes, I I might actually change that soon because um, I've been I've been streaming over five G for the past two or three weeks now. Um, I upped from 640 or something to 720 at 60 frames per second um, and things seem to have been all right I've not had any uh, any problems with the stream so I may for the Saturday stream up it to 1080p as well which will be nice okay I'm gonna get rid of the the font from here um, all the patch stuff basically I'm gonna set this back to 8009 and just give this a try. We have 1080p without 60 frames a second. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. same problem I wonder if this is to do with the Xmiser actually because um, it seems like it's not getting the correct data at all um, it's like the font is offset or something grab the no intro version yeah I don't know where that is though it's in game base isn't it did download game base at one point. I wonder if I've still got it. Let me have a look. Uh, thank you for the follow, Impact um, Impactado, Impactado, Impactado. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, all right. Let me have a look at my downloads. Uh, oh God, it's all sorts in here. Game base. No, no game base in there. Okay. Uh, all right. If anybody does have a link to, um, I think it's on Game Base 5 now, isn't it? Um, with If anybody's got a link to the Cauldron, um, Game Base 15, sorry, um, that they can send me a link to, that'd be really, really handy. Um, games, 8-bit files. Oh, here we go. Let's have a look. Cauldron. Cauldron, cauldron, cauldron. Cauldron to English. There we go. Okay, it's a T64 file, but that's fine. It means we can just grab it out of here anyway. Uh, it looks like it does still have an in intro, but there's two versions here. So let's grab them both. And see what's what in here. I don't know if these are no intro versions, but I assume the ones from Game Base don't have intros on them. No, that still has a intro. 
well, I'm still going to try. Um, I'm still going to try and take the data from this one. Uh, uh, let's call it c2.bin. find it again now don't I nice c2 dot bin there we go This looks the same. Um, oops. Okay, that's not the right entry address now. Okay, so let's let's load it back up into. Ah, uh, goes like this. Every other stream, we get one stream where I'm just. I spend more time trying to get into the actual game than I do actually doing anything. This is, seems like it's going to be one of those streams. Hi Duck of Doom, welcome to the stream. Okay, we're in. Okay, so now I'm going to take a snapshot. I'll override the snapshot I've got. Let's do our disassembly. Uh, disassemble. Okay, so it looks like the code is pretty much the same as it was before. Uh, although the entry point, no, the entry point is still 8009, so I don't know why that didn't work. Well, let's try without that screen RAM area, although I do worry that this looks like kind of important data here. Um, it's definitely not just random junk. There's there's some kind of some kind of data stored there. Okay, let's try a few things. First, let's try the original. Check our make file. Yep, our make file is right. And then if this doesn't work, we'll we'll try from 0800 instead of 0400. I'm going to put that border flash back in as well because it's hard to tell what's going on here. I don't know if you guys saw that, but actually this, huh, that actually displayed the the correct font for a split second and then broke. Okay, I'm going to try one more thing, I'm going to try 0800, whoops. I was considering um, going one step further than that this week and writing a block programming tool for doing for doing this sort of thing um, with a kind of online community so you can share blocks. You can create kind of a little effect and you can share it as a block with some inputs and outputs. And then people can make games, uh, games with those. Um, Let's load that into that location this time. Uh, and I'm going to put X1 in here because I do like seeing the border flash just so I know what's going on. Oh, I pressed the wrong button, that's why. Uh, 
<sighs> yeah, if anybody does have a copy of this without the intro, that would be that would be handy. No, same thing. In fact, it's missing colours now and sprites. So, so that data was definitely needed. That data was some kind of, uh, I'm not sure, some some kind of format. So let's have a look at the other data around there. Maybe it's just that we're missing some data that we should be should be storing. So I'm again. I'm going to save out from O one hundred. Um, no, actually, I'm going to say from, let's have a look. See, I'm not convinced O100 is the right place. I'm going to go O200. Oh. Yeah, we just get CPU jams when we go that low down. And the problem is if I just try and load that in, I'm probably going to get a CPU jam again anyway. Yeah, let me open the monitor and see what happens if I jump to the right location. See, even there it's, it's not got all the data I need. I'm kind of a bit stuck for what to do here, to be honest. Um, it's not a great, not a great stream, really. It's annoying that I have it all here. Um, but if I, I wonder what happens actually if I try and fill. Uh, one, actually, I'm not going to fill. I want to go two hundred to O three FF. Missing fill value, if I fill it with zeros. Uh, okay, it is still working. Which would imply it's not anything in that location. Well, why is this not working then? Let's try pausing it. Uh, let me just double check the... Um, Banking to turn on IO RAM 1xx. Okay, so let's set it to uh, 1 4 in here. 1 4. And then I'm going to save out. I wonder if it's the, the area under IO RAM and I'm not saving it correctly. Okay, cool. Is that the no intro one? Oh, still the same. Okay. So this is the one Colts just sent me. Okay. So with that PRG, that means we can actually just, uh, well, actually, let's have a look and see what's happening in the debugger, because if there is any compression, we need to make sure we we deal with that. Um, uh, where did that just go?
Let's reset. Maybe this is what I need to do. I just need to look for these no intro ones because I think sometimes the, the extra stuff they put in these intros really screws screws with things a little bit. So annoyed if this works because I've wasted an hour and a half doing this. But thank you, Colt. And good night, Mike. Thanks for joining. Yeah, it does actually, doesn't it? It's very similar. Uh, why is that loading up? Uh, uh, okay, let me go to settings, emulation, detach everything. Here we go. I need to rename it .prg or else it's not going to work. There is indeed some decompression going on. And we can see lots of stuff happening in the O200 area, although this is probably, yeah, this is data that's being wiped and recreated. This looks like there is actual code here. Um, I'm going to say, let's say from 0380 onwards. Let's try that. Let's do the same again. Let's just use the, the decompression. Or the compression even. What? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's even worse. Yeah, let me try something else. Oh, no, I know what I, one thing I definitely did wrong then. Um, goes to one four. See if I don't set that value, the the memory under um under IO RAM is not visible. Although it looks empty at this point. Yeah, there is nothing there. Might have to recreate the decompression here on the yellow screen there, catch it as it ends. Look, this is the thing, right? If I if I come into here and I go Oh It's the entry point, because I haven't changed anything and it broke. So it is the entry point that's wrong. So after all that, I think we were doing the right thing all along. We just had the wrong entry point. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Right. So let's go back to our entry point that we think was the entry point, but it turns out it's probably not. And have a look at some of these locations. So this is entered from these three places. So let's go to those one at a time. Okay. So this one. Actually, this is in. So this is a, another interesting thing here. When you see transfer X to the stack, that usually means somebody's resetting the stack pointer, um, either because they're resetting the game for some reason, or they're setting something up. There's also a D zero one eight right here as well, which is interesting. Um, there's an RTS here. 
and a push to the accumulator here. So this could be an entry point. So I'm going to write some of these entry points down and we'll try them out one at a time. So 813E could be one, um, but that's jump to from two locations. That's jump to from here, which seems to also be setting some low, low bites up here. Um, A060, 0B9, uh, 80B9 is branch instruction, so it's probably not that one. So, so 80C1, also a branch instruction, and CD, also a branch instruction. So it's these jumps, oh, I can read that branches here. So it's these jumps 8101 and 8228. So let's check those out. 8101 um, has a jump instruction which jumps directly to that location. Um, and that entry point is here, 80B4 branch to from here okay I think 813E is looking really interesting here so let's try that so let's load up our broken well actually let's load this one up so this is the one that Colts just sent me this has got the decompression in it uh, but it has no intro so if I use the original jump address, I get that. It's if I use this jump address, okay, interesting. It's not quite the right location, but you can see it's actually loading up fonts and stuff. Oh, it's not this time. Interesting. Thank you for the follow, Rob Van Der Leek. Welcome to the stream. It seems to work the second time, but not the first time. So we're kind of on the right right path. So 8133E, this is the bit that's eventually jumping to our location here. Um, let's try some of these places here. Thank you for the subscription, Sagitech. Very much appreciated. And uh, thank you for the follow as well, Bord, Bord Afi Pasquale. I'll call you Bord. That's kind of hard to say. What do you mean run on pre? Yeah, I think that was the other thing as well. I did run unpack on it. Um, uh, let's, on the PRG here. Let me just load this into my cracker folder. Which I don't have. There we go. And... Uh, what was it? One. Yeah, it does say it does say eight zero zero nine. And no other entry point. But I I'm not convinced that's the entry point at all for some reason. I want to check these locations. Because there's a lot of setup that goes. Because you'll see if I run that, I get that. Oh, interesting. If I do it twice, what? What? Why would 
why we're doing it twice do that so if I do it again corrupt correct hang on haha <laughs> I've got an idea so I'm going to take that now and save it And I don't know why that works, but yeah, I think I think it is a bit flipping somewhere. You're right. I think there's something. Uh, where did that go? That didn't go where I thought it went. Oh, because I'm in the wrong folder. That's why. Uh, oh no, I was in the right folder. Thank you for the follow, Code Visionary. Welcome to the stream. In fact, I'm going to do it from in the debugger because it's just easier. So if I go in here and I go 8009 and then resume, I get the incorrect. Yeah, there must be a bit flip somewhere. And because I'm saving it at this point, yeah. Yeah, this is going to be something like that, isn't it? That's really frustrating. Um, okay, so at this point now, I'm going to save it. Um, This is going to work. This is so annoying. I have 400. Yeah, I'll do a build. That's really bizarre. So when this game starts, whatever bit it is that's being flipped is in the correct state. But once the game has started, I think it's what it's doing is probably copying the level graphics for the intro. And copy the intro graphics for the level. Um, there we go. So let's just make sure that that's working in the game as well. That looks fine. Yeah, it's all good. Right, okay. Oh, God. After all of that. So yeah, what I th so to reiterate what I think is happening is there are there's two font sets, one for the one for the intro and one for the the main game and they kind of overlay slightly. Oh, there's a missing sprite. Okay, let me try that again. Um there's a little bit of overlap I think between the two. The missing sprite could be the the lower memory as well that I need to grab. That's fine, that's easy enough. So I think what's happening is when the game starts, it starts with the level graphics banked in. Um, and then when the intro begins, the first thing the intro does is go, right, I need my intro character, so I'm going to flip those characters now. And it flips from the level to the, the game characters. There should have been a skeleton. On this screen, or on the next screen. Not sure where. Um, yeah, so but by not having the correct screen set up first, you get the wrong the wrong character font. Um, let's just go and have a check. So we've we've copied everything except the the bottom half um, of the of the memory. So oh no, the skeleton is there. Look, the skeleton sprite is there. Um, and. Nothing in that lower area is seems to be related to it. I am going to copy that area though. I, I don't like the fact that I've not got it all. So I'm going to copy it from there. Wow. Okay. So that's that's one to remember. So I have to remember that again. If I have these problems, is if I if I have a problem um with an entry point is don't just try it once try it more than once because that would have solved this this issue so i was right with my initial my initial idea for the entry point it was 8009 
Uh, okay, right, let's give that a try, make sure that one works, and then we'll spend a little bit of time um, trying to change things. What do you think we should change, guys? Um, I find the control really difficult, but I'm not sure it's going to be an easy thing to fix. It seems like it's quite integral to the way the game works. That's so frustrating that that works. That doesn't work on this side, okay. Let's try a bit higher up. Let's try uh, a three nine F. Let's try from there. Why would that not work on those locations? What's in those locations? Uh, isn't that some kind of I/O functions or something? It's not anything. Uh, let's have a look. It was like reset vectors and things like that. I don't think it was anything that's being used. Data set buffer, unused. Yeah, I wouldn't have expected any of this to affect it. Unused as well. Okay, I I think maybe I think maybe we're okay. I don't think I don't think there is a sprite missing there because we are seeing. Um, the skeleton in a, in a higher area of memory, so I'm going to leave it as as 0400 because we've got it working at that point. Um, yeah, so if you've got any ideas, guys, of what we can um, what we can change, I'm going to do probably another hour or so. Um, a bit annoying that it's taken almost two hours to get to this point, but whatever. We we live and we learn. This is a learning process, after all. Yeah, the game mechanic's going to be a tricky one to, to improve, to be honest, because um, <laughs> I don't know how you would go about doing that and not... Oh, what have I just done there? What the hell did I do that? Hmm. Some kind of collapse button, F9. I will not be pressing that. There was a skelly there on your first place, you just know it should be the, always be there or not. Well, I don't mind it not being there because it's a pain in the ass, so. Fine by me if it's not. As long as it doesn't break anything else in the game. So annoying that that's working now. Um, okay, so let's have a think. What can we do? Well, infinite magic might be nice. Um, and you've got enough things to worry about without your magic running out as well. Uh, but that seems like a relatively simple fix, nothing too complex. Oh, and then I missed that. Okay. Bouncing I'm not sure what you would do to make this bear because it seems to there's a few ways that it's affected, right? So it's affected by you pressing jump, it's affected by how far you've dropped as well. I think that's gonna be difficult to change in any meaningful way. Okay, let's let's go and just do some basic basic cheats I think instead. So let's start by putting infinite magic in. So we need to look for the value ninety nine. So let's do this all in the in the debugger now. Okay, let's load into the game. So if you've got an action replay, this is really easy to do. You can do this, um, why am I not getting joystick? There we go. Let's 
start, goddammit. You can do this just by looking for this number in memory. Um, and then change it. Get rid of bounce gravity and just move in four directions. I'm not sure how we would go about doing that because surely you need that bounce to get to certain places as well. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to, to be honest, it's taken so long to get this far. Oh, you mean don't have any, don't have any movement, just move the sprite where you want to move it. All right, well, we'll try that in a minute. Let's, let's try the, let's try and make the infinite magic first. Um, so we're looking for the number 99. I'm going to start just by checking zero page. Sometimes they're easy to find in zero page. It may be that it's not stored as 99 either. It may be that it's stored as hexadecimal. Um, but let's check, let's check all of memory first. Oops. Yeah, there's a few areas that have the actual number 99 in them, but, um, actually one way we can do this, very easy way we can do this. And this is my preferred method, actually, if we're, if we're in the, uh, in the debugger like this. Uh, if you bring up the screen, you can have a look at what row and column it's, this is on. Um, the screen is at 4,000. Um, yep, definitely 4,000 no matter where we are, and we're on uh, column 18, row 3. So if I bring up the calculator and do 3 times 40 plus 18, then hex 88. So and then I go into here, 408A, so the screen starts at 40. Uh, and then as soon as that changes, it should pause. I think it has done. Why is it pausing there? Oh, you have to find those. Okay, I guess that's where the challenge is, right? In, in doing it, in doing it without dying, um, with it doing it without dying, but learning how to bounce over everything and at the right times. I'm gonna load this up again. In, um, even though the debug is crapped out on me. Okay, 408A, anything more than or equal to zero. Why is the game not starting? There we go. So this is loading in part of the screen. Uh, this is loading in part of the screen as well. Right, okay, so let's lose a little bit of magic. It draws again at this point, A3. There we go. 0255 and 0256, so that's where our things are. So we should see 9 and 9, 8 and 4. So we're going to end up with 84 magic when I restart. Yeah, there we go. So these are our locations. So 0255, so let's get rid of that one. stand here until we get popped again there we go uh, stop
store accumulator subtract there so I think that takes 10 off Uh, 256 is this bit here, so this is our digits. Uh, store Y. Store accumulator. And he's trying to work out where the subtraction is. I think it's I think it's probably this one here. If I change eight four C zero to E A E A and get rid of the breakpoint. Hopefully now well, we're doing, actually we've done some strange stuff now. Let's put that back again. Turn this one off so I don't hear that bouncing all the time. Put some music back on in the background. So maybe it's not this subtraction, there must be another subtraction. Could it be this one here? AD. Okay, E5 AD. So this is this bit here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's infinite magic. So let's put that in. So all we have to do is in the locations um, that we make these changes in the debugger. So in this case, it's 84A1. Uh, we just put two knops in to replace our code. And that's magic uh, so the other thing we would want would be infinite lives as well so I don't know how to lose a life now I guess I need to go and find something that will instantly kill me I think skeletons do don't they no they don't okay something does I don't remember what it was but there's definitely something that kills me straight away Wasn't that way anyway. There we go, All right. Although it's gonna put me in a random place now and I just really should have checked this area here. Okay, so I'm now gonna check how these are drawn. Same same method again. We're just going to look on the screen as to where they're drawn. Um, they are characters by the looks of things. Uh, there's no sprites there anyway. All the sprites are down here. Uh, I notice there's no sprite multiplexer in this game as well. I guess it doesn't really need one. Can't lose magic now, yeah. Uh, so I guess they would originally have taken 99 off you. Um, okay, so this is column 24, row 3, so same calculations again. 24, uh, sorry, 3 times 40. No, ugh, 3 times 40 plus 24. This is a hex of 90, so we're looking for 4A90 when that gets changed. So let's lose a life. I'm guessing we must be able to do in the water, right? No, apparently I can bounce on water now. Okay. 
Okay, let's just go all the way this way. Yeah, it kind of breaks the game because everything's killable now. And the spider's a bit screwed up, so. Let's go all the way across. What happens here now? <laughs> oh, no, this is too easy now. Oh, it's a raid. Hi, Last Miles. Welcome to the stream. And hi, everybody that's coming along with Last Miles. We're currently trying to hack away at uh, Cauldron 2. <laughs> and the current cheat that we've got is making it far too easy, so... Hi, guys. What have you been playing tonight, then? Have you been playing any Halloween games? Thank you for the follow, Gayak. Welcome. Yeah, infinite lives doesn't really matter, does it? As I can just let the math flow. <laughs> Thing is, I now I'm trapped. I can't get out. I'm I'm stuck in this location now. Assembly. <laughs> you saw six five zero two and had to raid me. Yeah, there's not an awful lot of it going on tonight. I mean, we've got one, um, one cheating at the moment, but this cheat is so powerful it doesn't seem to. <laughs> stop us dying at all in any way um, actually no that's not true I can die if I um, if I fall off the castle but unfortunately I'm stuck on the ground now so uh, we spent most of the stream trying to figure out how to get this game to actually run without bugging out um, yeah I'm kind of stuck down here now so I'm gonna I'm gonna restart. So I'm gonna build from uh, from this version. And then when that's built, I can just run it in here. I remember C6 Rose Assembly, yeah. C6 for all my first machine, used to code some demos, but forgot most of Oh, you should get back into it, it's amazing. And the scene is growing um, constantly as well. The scene is really huge at the moment. Um, I mean, I've only been back on the scene for two to three years or so, and already in the two to three years that I've been back on the scene, it has grown hugely, hugely. Um, the Zap Annual's just come out. Um, which I have a review in actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. I'm not gonna show you the cover because I know some people don't want to see the cover. Um, this. Don't know if you can see that. I'm in Zap magazine and I got eighty seven percent. For Dot Cosmos, so I'm quite pleased with that. I mean, I never thought when I was growing up that I would be in a uh, Zap magazine of any kind, so I'm very, very pleased that I've, I've made it there and pleased that I got a good score as well. So, oops, I'll fall off. I love the smell of that as well, the smell of a brand new uh, manual like that. Um, I don't think there's any point in putting a an infinite lives cheat in there because this is this is really easy to complete now. I'd imagine the Rodney Zach's books. Um, no, I don't know about them. Do you have a link to those? I could I could do with uh, looking into those. First comp was a Z80. I still have it, and it works. Always wanted to get hold of a Z80. I don't know why. I think I'd be um I think I'd be kinda 
upset by the lack of memory and the lack of kind of pixels but um yeah oh thank you for the bits last miles appreciated neither did i think i'd be streaming c64 sm code in 2000 no that's true that's a really good point uh, i've learned so much as well I, I i coded a lot when i was younger but i've learned so much more uh in the past two three years just because the internet exists so uh, 53280, so it was, no problem last miles, thank you for the raid, and uh, that's here another Commodore 64 fan as well, so, I had a dirty brown and C64 growing up, I had three new shells and two new motherboards, but it was the same C64, right, <laughs> the trigger's broom. Oh wow, I've, I don't know of that, I'll have to look that up after, after, the, um, after the stream, in fact I'm going to write it in a, in a browser window now so I can... Uh, okay, cool. Programming the Z80, alright. Cool, yeah, I should check that out after the stream. Yeah, cool. Um, all right. I don't know what to try now with this. Um, we could have a look at the the joystick control, I guess, and see what's going on there. See if we, we can actually, if we can stop him bouncing around. It'd be nice if we could just control him. Um, oh, and that skeleton's there now. Or is this a different screen? Okay, let's let's see if we can figure out where the sprites being controlled okay so he's sprite zero so we need to look for sprite zero being affected um so let's go and have a look um let's take a break point in that's probably the easiest way so we'll look at the y position because he's bouncing so his y position is going to change all the time anyway um let's have a look where that's been written to so Oh, we've got that stupid bug again in the uh, in the disassembler, where it's registering completely the wrong things. I'm going to restart the debugger. So then the Z80 came from the Intel 8008 and was the equivalent of Cisco and the 6502 coming to 600 to risk. Um, well, it's definitely a reduced instruction set, that's for sure. Um, when you compare it to even the Z80, so it would make sense to me. Yeah, I think it did come from the 6800. Yeah, um, I, I can't be sure of that though, I'd have, I'd have to look that up. Um, all right, let's let's go back, stick that breakpoint in, let's put that in here. There we go. Um, actually, I just need to turn it off for a second because it's pausing the intro. Get into the game. Right, there we go. We're bouncing now, so we're going to turn this on. Okay, there we go. So we've got a routine which is copying sprites from 039F, sprite positions from 039F and applying them to all all sprites, so every sprite is being updated, so this looks like it probably was at one point a multiplexer uh, which starts here That's, this is our Y, so we should see this E1 going up and down if I turn that off um we do indeed, but the X is at zero, or is that just because I'm in the, I'm right on the border of the Sprite MSB, aren't I? Yes, there we go. So this looks like it was the beginning of a Sprite multiplexer, um, because it's copying, it's copying Sprite locations from here to somewhere else. It may even be multiplexing, but I don't think it is. Okay, good night, Andy. Thanks for joining the stream. 
Load data has four side conservative instructions, 6502 interleaves them. Yeah, 6502 does some uh, really, really quick instructions. I mean, two cycles for um, if you if you if you write an instruction that's either in immediate mode, so you just load a value into it, not from memory directly in immediate mode loading, or if you load um, or if you do any of the transfer instructions or a branch that isn't taken. And then they're all two cycles and it's because the the read and the write could kind of happen almost simultaneously like they like you say they're interleaved so yeah in in instruction all oh, right yeah so one kind of you want two or three by the sign um thank you for the follow noob nubovitsky i like that name and thank you for the follow porn master as well i missed that one Uh, with these games programmed in assembly, yes, most of them were programmed in assembly. There's the odd one that was um, that was programmed in. Um, uh, thank you for the follow, useless pony. The odd one that was programmed in basic or or a mix of basic and assembly, but mostly assembly. You just couldn't get the speed out of the system without it. Okay, so we're going to have a look to see where this value is being written. Um, Three A zero. I know where that's happening. It says it's happening there, but it's not. There we go. Okay, so this is taking. Okay, it's. So Taking 027F, so let's go and have a look what that is. Maybe that's a gravity value. Uh, which is this one here. Is that being updated all, all the time? Yeah, that seems to be directional. <laughs> Thank you, Agma Finbot. Uptime, that's one I should put in. I'm I'm really really bad with my with my bot commands. I've been I've been meaning to put more and more in, and I haven't been putting them in. Um, and uptime would have been really useful on on Thursday. Um, sorry, Saturday for for the twelve hour stream, because it was the sort of thing that people had asked quite quite a lot. I did put a tools one in there. I've now got my tools one. I'll, not really worth showing off, but there you go. Thank you for the follow, San. I'm just going to call you Sans. That's a long name. Thank you for the follow, Sansi. Sansi. Yeah, I'm not going to try that. Commit. I do need to commit one, don't I? Yeah. Sorry, Akmafin. I know. You're my commit bot. You tell me when to commit. I thought I'd done some other ones as well, but I, I can't remember what I did. Oh, I did a GitHub one as well, so. Yeah, there you go. I did put a GitHub one in. I was trying to find a way of triggering sound effects. I need to do that so you can you can call a listen on me so I can actually pay attention to the stream when I need to. Um, all right, I'm going to take a quick two minute break, guys. Um, and when I come back, we'll we'll carry on till about half twelve, and then I'm going to have to call it a night because I have got work in the morning. Um, so, right, I'll be right back, guys. Uh, but I spend more time making these animations and games. Oh, you you wouldn't believe how many games I'm working on. It's crazy. Um, yeah, that was 16 colors. Um, but I'm, I'm using. Uh, in fact, I'll show you in the debugger because it's. Uh, I'm quite proud of it. It's just learned to do it this week so um find the that's no, not that one so it's a sprite crunch i wanted to learn how to do sprite crunch so i wrote a little program to do it which is this thing let's turn all my breakpoints off oh my breakpoints are working ah cool I actually have a breakpoint in there. Um, 
and my, my debugger breakpoints weren't working before, but they are now. So this is uh, eight sprites using sprite crunch. They're stretched down the screen. In fact, if I show you on the, yeah, you can see there. So these are the four sprites, uh, eight sprites. Four are stretched um, horizontally, four aren't. And then using sprite crunch, you can see as I hover over them, they flicker. Um, they're stretched all the way down the screen. Um, the effect of that means that the, the screen is pushed down as well. So the be right back ends up at the bottom of the screen. And then I just use, use rasters to change the colors in the background, the horizontal bars. It's a fairly simple effect to achieve when you know how to do it. It's just, I never knew how to do it before. So, um, and I want to do much more with the sprite crunch because this could be done with a multiplexer, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I'd never done Sprite Crunch before, so I gave it a shot. Um, okay, cool. Let's let's go and have a look at the cauldron again. Uh, open the right window. My phone's just picked up on me, saying something or other. Do you add a column pattern? Yeah, that's what I want to do. So I. I want to do two things. Uh, first of all, I want to work out how to do it without jumbling the sprite, because those sprites, um, those sprites are jumbled. The reason why they're solid is because if I didn't make them solid, the data in them would be all over the place. Um, it scrambles them basically. Um, but there is a way of, of picking a specific pattern through the sprite, which will stop it from scrambling. So I want to figure out how to do that. Um, and then I want to do um, uh, variable heights as well. So I can stretch a sprite or, or shrink a sprite down to like 16 lines or all the way up to 150 lines, any value in between. So I can create kind of stretching, smooth stretching sprites, which would be nice. Hi, Sakrek. How are you doing? Have you finished your game now? I need to, I need to have a look at that, actually. <clears throat> we're um very very slowly making progress on on this game spent most of the stream trying to figure out how to actually um how to actually get the game to load without corrupted corrupted graphics uh oh thank you for the host coconut welcome to the stream how are you doing posting it off topic okay cool i will have a look at that and for those who don't know we do have a discord channel um, which is where this um, <coughs> uh, where this off-topic channel is, um, and you can you can join other people who are interested in doing six five zero two, and and get tips and share share assets and share progress, and just generally chat about Commodore. It's a it's a cool place. Oh, thank you for the bits, coconut, and happy spooky Halloween to you too. I walked past the house this morning um, and they had biohazard tape all over it and gravestones that they'd set up in the garden and so it was really over the top. Um, okay, right, let's get into the game. So 027F, so this, this location here um, seems to be some kind of direction for... Why, is, why can't I load the game now? Why is, why is it not letting me in? There we go. So this seems to be a speed value, actually. So I reckon this is how high I'm going. So if I set that to 04... No. No, uh, maybe not. Uh, thank you for the follow, Siberian Tigers. We need a Discord channel for talking about our own projects. Yeah, we do actually, don't we? I, I need to make some uh, mods on Discord as well because it's it's starting to grow, and I think I'm uh, I'm not always available on there. Um, I do try to be on it, so, um, but yeah, let's get some um, let's get some mods on there and, and let's get the channel sorted out. If any of the the Discord regulars fancy um, 
helping me mod the channel just send me a message and I'll I'll pick a couple of people to, to help mod out obviously if you've only just joined the channel I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna allow you to mod but I, I think the people who've been there a couple of months then you know if you fancy helping me mod send me a message and I'll I'll try and set that up I don't even know how to set that up so uh, okay, O two F seven. Let's see where that's being written to. So, was it F seven? I think it was. It was uh, no O two seven F. So I was wrong. Okay, so there seems to be some table here that it's reading from. And then writing the values into these locations. So let's go and have a look at that table. Could just be that we need to change the values in that table. Okay, so. Are these values just being read or are they being written to as well? I think they're just being read. So let's. And then I guess if I jump, it'll go higher up the. Oops. Keep on that location. Uh, what do I do it now? Press fire, don't I? Uh, okay, so this is affecting how high we bounce. I wonder what happens if we just fill these full of zeros. <laughs> okay, I'm going to fill it with zeros all the way up to here. Uh, BC60 to BZ80, okay. Oh, I broke the skeleton. Okay, I can't jump at all now, though. But what I want to try, I also can't fall. <laughs> Who knows what we're doing? I have no idea what I've done here. I can't seem to move at all now. Ideally, what we want to do is, is change the joystick so it only controls. How long have we got? We've got about half an hour. Let's let's see if we can find where the joystick's been being used. Maybe if we can just override everything that affects the sprite other than the joystick. We can see what that does. Sackrag, I think that's most houses in the US today. Yeah, we don't we don't kinda have that kind of over the top Halloween culture here. I mean we definitely have trick-or-treaters and they do dress up and they do carry around little pumpkins full of sweets but um, it's not like the houses that they visit are generally not um, generally aren't done up in the same way that I, I've seen on I, I say just just seen on TV really I've not seen it I've never been to America on Halloween I imagine it's a really cool thing to, to witness though Uh, okay, so let's have a look through memory, see if we can find where the joystick's being used. Ooh, quite a few places. Uh, okay, so one trick to look for, to narrow it down, is if we look for a specific pattern after that. So if I bring up my instruction list. I'm looking for AND, which is here, and immediate mode, which is here, so 2, 9. 
Oops, two nine. Okay, that's not being used at all. All right, I'll just kind of have a look at these locations instead. There are some insane houses on my street. Their mine lights turned off and hiding. Yeah, see, I live in a first floor flat, so uh, with a with a kind of security door at the entrance, so we never get trick or treaters. I don't have to deal with that, thankfully. Um, okay, I'm going to check from here down first because I think this is probably going to be the most likely location for the joystick control. Uh, so this is checking for the fire button, it looks like, which I'm not that interested in. Um, I'm going to write that address down though because that might be a way to prevent the, the fire from doing anything. So at the moment, actually it's not doing anything anyway, but we may have to turn that off. Can note of that. Uh, let's have a look at another location. Turn that off. Six FB. Ah, uh, here we go. That was almost right, but they've done an ER in the middle as well. Um, so eight D is our joystick control. So if I go there. We should see this value change as I move the joystick around, um, but we're not doing it for some reason. Probably because I'm I'm stuck now. So I reset. Flat way cooler than apartment. I think that's just because you're used to it. The the word flat seems crappy to me. Apartment seems slightly better it's like anything if you don't use the word enough then um then the alter the, the you know the, the the alternate word for the word you use probably sounds better like sidewalk sounds cool as pavement sounds rubbish It also makes more sense. Sidewalk is exactly what it is, right? I definitely think we've broken some stuff. I mean, the split skeleton is... Are the bits represent the joystick signals in the zero page? I think they are, so I think this... Was it 8D, this one here? Although it doesn't seem to be for some reason. So hang on, this is checking the joystick to see, also I don't seem to be, oh yeah I can move, okay. So this is reading the joystick values, inverting them with 1F, which means the, the five bits that are the joystick signals change from being pulled low to being pulled high when the joystick's active. Um, we end with 1F to just retrieve those five on its own. Therefore, if it's zero, we're doing nothing. So this should be, this should be the same. 8D should be the value which contains the joystick movements. Um, but I'm not seeing that value change for some reason. It's definitely there. The accumulator says it's four. If I step over it, oops. Accumulator eight, yeah, so it's definitely the right value. Oh, it is. It is, but then it's being cleared again. So at some point it's being cleared. So eight C means left, uh, and with zero C means if you're going left or you're going right. So. This is what this bit's doing, the left and right movement. Um, and then it's shifting bits, which is why it always ends up at zero. 
Okay, so let's have a look, see if we can figure out. Two C seven, okay. Let's have a look what happens to this value. It looks like this is what's deciding which direction we're going in. Oh, actually, it looks like it's up and down. Oh, but it does contain the left and right as well, and up and down. So if I force that to be zero all the time, I think we'll see that we actually don't move. Because if I start adding numbers in there, I can move. So I'm moving just by changing the number in that, that location. So that would be the first thing to do is to remove this. So this, this entire block of code here should probably be replaced by something which actually changes the position of the sprite instead. Um, so let's have a look. So, O seven one zero jumps to here. O seven two F jumps to exit straight away. So this is actually only dealing with left and right. It looks like. Let's try it. Let's try changing the code. So, keeping that open, I'm gonna open this up here. Car park is cool over parking lot. No, see again. I prefer the term parking lot. I, I, I really do think it is, is the term that you use all the time, you get bored of. It's like anything, you get bored of it if you if you do too much of it. Uh, 8704. So we're going to replace this block of code here. From here all the way down to, to here, I guess. And 8730, what is that doing? Okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, let's do the left and right, so let's let's do it from 0870A. Now I don't know what's moving the character, I think it's just been, the position has just been added to it, so. <coughs> <laughs> I'm kind of glad to give them back, yeah. There's so many terms as well. Like petrol and gas is another one as well. And I realise that gas is short for gasoline, but it always kind of tickles me that the word gas would also imply that it's not a liquid, when it really is a liquid. Uh, okay, so... We've now got a value that's either left or right, so we can... Um, I am going to store it in 8D, because that's where they've been storing it. I'm going to end with... So this is left. And if it's not left, I'm going to jump to here. Otherwise, I'm just going to decrease this x value. Now this is going to break because of the most significant bit so I just want to see if this is going to work first before I actually make any commitments to changing anything else. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't make it easier to switch from gas cars. I have no idea what this is going to do at all. And to be honest, at this point, I'm just kind of, I'm just messing around for the last half an hour. Turning circle, is that what they call them? Now, that is one term I don't like. Turning circle sounds weird. Okay, I'm, I can no longer move left and right. So, whatever it is that moves me left and right... Oh, 
O2C7 is what controls our direction. So instead, what we should be doing is in any location that OTC7 is being written to, we need to get rid of it and replace it replace it with our own so um, oops oh quite a lot uh, okay so one of these is going to be the up and down bounce or maybe what we need to do is have a different value. So say I use, let's just pick a random area. Let's say O2E7. Uh, oops. Three nine F the terms. Oops. Oh, what's going on there? Actually, stop bouncing around now for some reason. Uh, okay, I'm just going to search for that instead. Uh, oh, so many locations that these are being written to. Um, And that's one of them that's been written to. I think given more time, this would be kind of easy to, to, to fix, but I think right now it's not going to be that easy. Uh, okay, there's this area here. Which seems to be doing some stuff. I wonder if I'd knock that out. So uh, 9984 EA. Okay, let's try that. Let's just try. Oops. No, it's properly broken now, isn't it? Okay, I'm just going to copy. I'm just trying random stuff now. If anybody has got better suggestions, then, then please let me know. I'm just trying out any old crap now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, <laughs> it's so much easier to do as well nowadays, Palmer. So the, the 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 tools that we have now are just so far ahead of anything we could have dreamed of back then. The fact that you can do it all on a PC. The fact you've got copy and paste and you know, multiple ways of saving very quickly. All things we didn't have back then.
Okay, so that seems to have turned my controls off. But I'm still bouncing, so something else is making me bounce. Oops, let's give this machine a reset. Doesn't even want to reset now. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do another twenty minutes and then and then I'm gonna call it a night. And on Saturday we're gonna um get back to the game. It's been two weeks since we touched it, so um I think we're in the middle of doing I think it's the player player of shots we were we were dealing with the player kind of um shooting the enemies so we'll we'll look at trying to get those in place this weekend okay yeah so the controls aren't doing anything but we're still bouncing so i want to see um See if there's any locations that we still need to mess around with to get those values back to zero again. Nine AC eight, okay. This one clears the value in that location, so I'm not too fussed about that. Uh nine eight nine zero, which is up here. This is interesting, 988F. Seems to be storing something in that location, so let's go and... It's still bouncing though. Um, 99B7. That's loading the value, so I'm not fussed about that. 9935. That is storing the value there, so we want to get rid of that. Oh, this is this looks like it's our joystick routine, or it looks similar to it anyway. Let's just pause while I change this value. Still bouncing though. There's so many of these to change. This is the sort of thing you need a you need a couple of hours to mess around with. So much control to change in here. Yeah, see there's another one. I'm gonna knock both of those out. I feel like at some point though this is just suddenly gonna oh six C, yeah. And 6e pause to yeah the debugging tools are amazing Thing is, as well, I didn't know about this debugger until way too late. I wish I'd have known about this when I was writing, um, writing my games two years ago, or a year ago, whenever it was that it it came out. Um, you know, I was having to do things the hard way, changing border colors and things like that to try and get an idea of what the hell was going on. Uh, that's another one. Nine seven. I was loading zero into it though. I don't care about that one. Six nine seven. I, I don't think any of this is going to work. You know. <laughs> uh, that's a zero. Yeah, none of it's working so far, is it? Am I even looking at the right location? Yeah, it is the right location. So changing this value lets me 
move around. If I change that to that value. So that is the right value to change. There's just so many of them. It's, it's written to in so many places. See, there's one where it's written 91D. Uh, probably shouldn't change it while it's while it's running either. <coughs> oh, Manfred Trends, one of my favourite coders. Uh, Turrican Two is is po probably my favourite name of all time. Um, and yeah, I think towards the like, early nineties, um, late eighties, early nineties, it became kind of common for. Uh, developers to start using uh, PCs to it. It's just, I mean, why wouldn't you? It's as soon as they became able to do it, you just want to do it. It's so much easier. 95C1, okay, so that's this one here. Aha, there we go. Oh no, I forgot I had it paused. I found it then, damn it. A6, this is loading the value. 954D, it's all over the show. Yeah, another one there. This is up and down though now, so I think this is probably. This is probably the ones. Nope, still not. Uh, you've always said roundabout. Interesting. Yeah, the the term turning circle just seems strange to me. I mean, I mean, I, I kind of see why it might be called that, but it's considering how inventive American names usually are. Although American names are descript descriptive, sidewalk descriptive. Turning circle is descriptive. You can't take that away from it. And for D9, uh, God, these are all over the show. I mean, right now this is this is a crazy experiment that seems like it's bound to fail. So I'm not too worried about what happens here. Oh. You go round about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, LucasArts, the Scum engine was, was PC, wasn't it? And the thing is as well, I, I really did want to do that tonight. I wanted to do Maniac Mansion, which would have been a, a really good, oh no, CPU gem. There we go. M4DA. Oh, I don't know why we're getting a CP jump there. We really shouldn't be doing. Did I change? No. I don't know why we're getting a CPU jump there. 9984. Let's go and have a look. What did I break up there? Oh, there should be an EA there as well. Oh, I think this this is being written to by some other location. Uh, eight four nine nine. Oh no, it's not. Uh, it's crashed out. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave it there, guys. I can't, I can't get the control stuff to work. If if we'd have had a bit more time, um, I'd have definitely done that. Um, 
yeah, I think I'll I think I'll leave it there, guys. Uh, let's find someone to raid, actually. Hopefully, this time I'll actually find somebody who's online and not like somebody who's not. Um, who should we pick? Let's go and find somebody now. Uh, need somebody retro. There's not enough retro streamers, and all the retro streamers just seem to stream SNES games. Uh, yeah, sleeping does help. Uh, but I mean, this is this is what we do on these streams. We just pick a game at random. Well, not at random. They're, they're just chosen by subscribers. Um, and we spend a stream trying to hack at it, and then whatever whatever state it's in, I'll drop that into uh, my GitHub um, and share that with people. Um, I'm not seeing any interesting streamers. Uh... Hmm. There's... No. There should be like a random, random raid button, that would be kind of cool. Habitat? I'm not sure what Habitat is. I don't think I've ever seen that. Rainbow Islands, I'd like, yeah, I'd like to have a play with Rainbow Islands one night, that would be kind of cool. Um, it's not an awful lot you need to do to, to Rainbow Island, so it's kind of perfect anyway. So, uh, all right, let's let's have a look if there's any Amiga streamers on. Uh, nope. Uh, wow, it's really slim pickings on a Thursday night. So we've got. Um, Arcus playing Batman. Uh, I've seen. I'm just trying to find some of those. Oh, what's that? That looks like. Oh, I'm going to raid them. Okay. Yeah, I've never, never heard of it before, so. Should I spell that right? Yep. So I don't know who this guy is, um, or what it is exactly that they're playing, but it does kind of look like Ghosts and Goblins or Ghouls and Ghosts. So we'll, we'll raid them now, uh, and I'll see you guys all on Saturday for um, the next game stream, which should be um, pretty pretty cool, I think. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm hoping we can get the um, actual um, the the enemy kind of eating in place, so we've got something kind of cool to to implement. I've got some ideas how we're going to do the, the sprite morphs for those. So um, cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming along, and um, thank you to all the raiders and all the all the bits and all the follows. And I shall see you guys on Saturday. Cheers, guys. Bye.